trying to get ideas from the students. Maybe some Christmas songs that you like. Christmas song. Yeah, try you out on some. Try to assign. I have a bunch of songs in my mind that I want to use in the show. Yeah. But I'm not sure where I want people to be on what verses, what songs, you know, different mm -hmm. things like that. So we can. Yeah, your fresh cut looks good. I'm, Thank you. I'm, I'm growing my name right now so I can get a fresh cut. Nice, yeah. Yeah, I, I was getting my hair real short all over. Mm -hmm. And I looked at myself in the mirror one time and I said, it looks like I'm going bald and I'm not. So yeah. I said, I don't want any more real tight on top. Yeah. Because uh, my dad never lost his hair and I'm not I'm not losing hair. So I, I like it short on the sides. Yeah. So I'm starting to let it grow more on the tops. Well, it's a good style for sure. Well, thanks. <laughs> Wife says she likes it better too. Let's do E. e. until you learn how to do it the right way. Keep the, the, pretend like the air is going in and out of this tube and it's going out, and then when you breathe in, don't let that airflow stop. It has to go out and then come right back in the exact same place. Keep that open. Instead of uh, like a lift of the jaw, yeah. don't lift the jaw, don't don't go, don't gasp. Just let the air go in and out without any interruption. Okay. E e e e yes. E
as easy as breathing. And if you do it right, and you sing just the same as you breathe, because when you breathe, you breathe out and you breathe in, you don't gasp when you breathe in normally. You just breathe out and breathe in without even thinking about it. And it's the same way with singing. You don't want to make inter interrupt the airflow. It, it's such a big difference in the, the ability to sing and in the uh, effort, effortlessness you use when you sing. It makes it a whole lot better. Let's okay. do a couple songs. need to adjust your lesson time a little bit. Okay. Um, if I make it a little bit later, um, but I give you guys, I, I know earlier yeah. makes it tougher maybe because of getting I, here. I got my car back now, so I'll be able to come on my own. Oh, I, you're I driving now? Are you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so you'd be available to come a little bit later. Or you could even come earlier if you needed to? Yeah, I could do either or. Dependent. Okay. Um, Take a look real quick here. Gotcha. Yeah. E So. Is it okay if I get it? Yeah, of course. Okay. I still have to think about it. I got, I'm getting so many new people coming in. I got a process where I could fit everybody in. And if you're a little flexible, you can come a little earlier or later and help me out a little bit. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm pretty flexible. Seven two four nine one two five 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 eight. Subaru 2016 and present or legacy legacy mm. but yeah yeah it was messed up for a while all summer actually mm. yep all right let's do uh one more <laughs>
Is there a Christmas song that you uh, particularly like or one you know? You can look at some of these titles, see if you see something you recognize. Something maybe you've heard in church, like the traditional. Just, I have a hymnal that has a traditional one. You like Silent Night? Yeah, that's a good one. That good one? Okay, yeah. let's take a look at Silent Night. This might be a little, be a little high. Let's just take a look at it. <laughs> That sing that all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. silver and gold. I never really knew what it was from. That it's from Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. It goes silver. And Uh, 
you ever seen Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the cartoon? Yeah, like, like the, the you know, animation. It's like a toy, yeah. 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 The, the uh, snowman who narrates the show, show, he sings this. This is his solo from the, from the movie. Silver and That's the snowman's name, Sam. Sam the snowman. Gotcha. <laughs> Mr. Mike, Sam the snowman. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we can do. Yeah, I definitely want you to sing something in the show. We're, um, I don't know if I told you we're, how we're thinking about setting it up as a, an old radio um like a, a radio, a Christmas radio broadcast from mm -hmm. the 1940s. Okay. Did I, did I tell you about no. that at all? No. Um, we're going to try to, um, I'm hoping I can, if I if it works out, usually when I picture something, <clears throat> as far as our Christmas shows, it usually ends up being close to what I imagine it to be. Last year we did kind of a Scrooge type theme, mm -hmm. and we did a, uh, we didn't do the whole Christmas Carol Scrooge show, but we had the the Scrooge um, vibe going through the whole thing. Okay. Um, two years ago, we sort of just did a variety show where we just sang songs and danced and whatever. But this year, I want to kind of do an old uh, 1940s radio uh, station and and have. Um, sing older type Christmas songs. Uh, they don't have to be all from the 40s, but um, I, want, and I want to have a little bit of a story going on. I like when you're putting on a show, if there's a backstory, like a story behind the story, like mm -hmm. if everybody's doing, like when they're on air, on the air, on the radio show, they're doing a show, but there's also a story when they're off the air. And there's a, um, there's an actual musical called the 1940s Radio Hour, mm -hmm. but we don't have time and I don't have the money to rent and do the whole show, but I want to get some ideas from it and maybe come up with our own thing and give some people some characters and some lines and then we'll go from a little bit of a story into songs, but we'll pick our own songs. We won't do the songs that are from that musical because they're they're... They're not a lot of, they're not very many, very many Christmas songs in that show. But I want to do all Christmas songs like we do. Okay. Then we'll do like radio commercials from the 40s. And what's cool, and, and when you did, when they did radio back in those days, they didn't memorize much. They would, because there was no audience, they had, they had their scripts. They just read from the, you know, if you've ever seen a, mm -hmm. an old movie where they would just read the commercial off of their uh, the paper. They would just read it. Right. And you didn't have to memorize stuff like television. You have to obviously have to memorize everything if you're on screen. But um, I think it'll be fun. It'll be something different. We can um, still tie in all these songs that we that we like too. Um, let's think of another one you might know. Uh, what about We Wish You a Merry Christmas? We wish you a Merry Christmas. We're probably gonna maybe end the show with this one. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. Good tidings for Christmas and a Happy New Year. We all know the sin is coming. Oh, no, this end is coming. 
did not know this song. Started. Well, you know, the, this part was the most everybody sings yeah. this part. These verses are not sung very often. Most everybody just sings this page, which everybody knows. And there's also several other verses that aren't even in this version. It's, yeah. a, it's a song that gets butchered. People do it different ways. They change it and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But the part that you do know is what everybody else knows. And what key is that part in? Well, this is in the key of G. We wish you a Merry Christmas. A came out nobody wanted to record it they thought it was stupid and ridiculous <laughs> and, you know, but Bing Crosby turned it down all these big name people didn't want to do it wow and the guy that actually recorded it, his name was Gene Autry he was a country singer mm -hmm. and it and he was pretty well known at the time but they thought he was taking a risk by recording it because they thought people would make fun of him mm -hmm. they thought it was a stupid song but it was a huge hit for him it was the biggest hit he ever had and Bing Crosby later regretted not doing it, but then I'm he sure. but then he did a version of it later on, but his wasn't nearly as good as the original one was. So the, the original is the best. Um, we're definitely gonna put this song in. Let's try it one more time. Ready?
for a couple more exercises too. singing along with somebody else and they're singing the high notes and you're singing with them you might think you're hitting them but you're, mm -hmm. you're not you, you you're you're letting them hit the high note and you're kind of maybe a little bit below it okay but the, when, you, when you sing to a piano then it, it holds you more accountable when it uh, it teaches you hey I'm, I gotta get work a little bit harder to get up there and that's why these that's why these notes are getting better now because you're singing along with with piano with me playing it for you. Let's do uh hey. super low and you're not super high um, most guys are baritone so I might have told you that mm -hmm. I'm a baritone your voice is similar to mine um, that's why your range is similar to mine okay um, your falsetto voice is like I said not really your real voice it's a false voice but most people are gifted with some people have a great falsetto voice most baritones don't have a really good falsetto voice that blends with their voice. 
but we won't know that until we get to that point where right. I'm ready to start working that into your voice. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to develop your, your, your singing voice, the quality of your voice. I, I know you're, you're dancing and you're acting and you're, and you're modeling. Mm -hmm. The quality and the, the presence of your voice, if you work on it, could be your greatest uh, skill. That's what, I, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, your singing voice could be your, you know, your biggest selling point, your biggest thing. So, that, so you mean like you think I have potential with it? That's what I'm saying, yeah. It has the quality, you have a nice presence of voice, the, the, the sound quality of your voice is pleasing to the ear. Um, uh, the pitch, we gotta work on making sure you're, because when you get up to the higher part, I don't know, if you're not quite getting to the notes yet, and I'm not sure if you're aware that you're not getting to the yeah, notes. Yeah, okay. it, it long as you're, yeah, as long as you're sure, or you're you're aware, aware that, you know, I'm not quite, hitting those yet that's mm -hmm. a big thing because some people can not be hitting them and not know they're not hitting them because then that's that could be a problem because you want your ear to be yeah. to where I, it I, I know my voice starts falling off after middle C usually. Yeah. Well, that's, what, that's where it's been you've been losing your confidence but today you were hitting D Burrow? yeah you were hitting the D above middle C and, and baritones usually I don't usually perform much higher and sing in public. I can re I can vocalize up to here with my real voice, mm -hmm. but I don't sing anything in public up above here because you don't ever want to be singing at your highest. Because sometimes it might not come out. You know, you don't. You always want to have a little bit of play there. You want to vocalize and warm up higher than you actually perform. Okay. You know, so. I'm confident you can be warm able to get higher than you perform. Yeah, high, you want to get that way. You're you're warmed up. You're stretching yourself so that the stuff you actually perform is is not you're not pushing yourself to your limit. Okay. You know. Right. Um. So, but, but you you're getting more. You hit a D today. And you were singing D's um, in one of the songs we were doing at Rudolph. You were singing the D. Um, when we were doing Silent Night, it had a. I think an E flat in it, and you weren't quite getting up there, but that's okay. The rest of the sound, the Silent Night sounded really nice. Until you got to the higher part, it sounded really nice. So um, I'm thinking about maybe using you on Silent Night when we do the show. Um, but that's still in the works. Yeah. Don't, don't hold me to that. But the way you, the way it sounded, it sounded really good. Um, so, but you stick with the lessons and you, you keep learning what I'm teaching you. Singing can be something you can really be good at, and when you can use it the rest of your life. You know, singing, no matter what age you are, you can always, you know, sing. Even if you're maybe too old to dance or too old to model or whatever, singing. Mm -hmm. That's like I tell a lot of kids that come, well, especially girls. They, they spend thousands and thousands on dancing lessons, and then as soon as they graduate from high school, they never dance again. They say, learn to sing. You got this great singing voice. Mm -hmm. you, you can use that the rest of your life. But I hate, I hate to read, because my, my oldest son, Nick, took dancing, and I hate to read in the, the programs every year. We're gonna see you dance for the last time. It's like, oh my gosh. Right. The kids been dancing since they were three. Now they're 18, they're gonna graduate and go off to college or get a job and you're never going to see them dance again but you you sing you can sing and nick is when he graduated he hasn't been dancing much the only time he dances is in our christmas show and if we if we weren't doing a christmas show nick wouldn't he's been out dancing now for seven years and he never gets any other chances to dance but i, I make him dance in the christmas show because i think all those years you took dancing lessons you were a great tap dancer I want to see you dance again. Mm -hmm. And he's not as good as he was before. He's not as sharp as he was before, but he can put it, he'll put a routine together and he still looks good at it because he always could dance. Tap was always his great. He always was really good at tap. But um, I'm going to ask him for pointers. You going to, the dancing? Anything I can learn, I want to learn. Yeah, well, take uh, some dancing lessons. You know, do that. Do it. Yeah. And Cheryl Frost, I think, should be the place you could go. That's where Nick, that's where my son Nick went, so.
I'm gonna have to call her again. I yeah. called her a few weeks ago, but it didn't. They must have been uh, closed or something. Yeah, I'll give her a call. Didn't pick up. Yeah, that was a good lesson. Oh heck yeah.